Hello. Welcome to another episode of uh, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. Here we have uh, four 6mm ball magnets. I just have two of them taped white and two of them taped red, and they're hanging from a tripod here. This is a uh, N45 Gauss 6 inch by 2 inch, extremely powerful beast. You probably think I just got done spinning the uh, two ball magnets, but no, they've they've been uh, twitching like that for hours now. The reason being is that they are hovering a hair off center of the centripetal returning convergent magnetic field, and it's perpetually twitching like that because it's twitching in the uh, the inflowing centripetal convergent field. Now, the uh, centrifugal field is moving in a clockwise fashion, so let's give it a little clockwise spin here. Actually, I just threw it off in the left direction. I'll show that to you in a second. It's uh, centering itself. over the centrifugal, but now it's centering itself as it wants to, to terminate, as any magnet does, it wants to terminate the dead center centripetal of any other magnet, regardless of the strength uh, differential of the pressure gradients between the two magnets. Mm. Now it is unwinding as it had wound, but since the uh, centrifugal is moving clockwise, the uh, centripetal is moving counterclockwise, so now it's moving in the correct orientation it wants to go, so now I'm just going to give it a swing in one direction. And you see the erratic pattern is following a precession angle of 42.5 degrees exactly until it reaches dead center, where it is uh, trying to unwind and spin itself into the centripetal. Now, there's nothing holding these ball magnets together, not the tape. They're just being held together magnetically themselves. I've just got a very simple wrapping of uh, colored electrical tape around them. So there's uh, and uh, that and just some uh, string holding them there. Uh, we were testing the other day this uh, beast magnet. Uh, we measured uh, 14 feet away. We were able to influence a CRT tube. We measured it with a measuring tape, so we're able to get influence at a distance of 14 feet plus. This is a hair over 14 feet on this. This uh, large neodymium iron boron, it's not necessarily Gauss rating. People forget that. I mean, you can have extremely high pressure, like a finely focused uh, water hose nozzle, but you don't have a tremendous amount of volume. So this one doesn't actually have to have that large of a Gauss rating to be both dangerous and uh, wicked. Actually, after uh, looking, being close proximity to it, especially if it's a centrifugal field right here, I actually have pain in my eyes and in my face after doing a bunch of experimentation with it. At first I thought it was an anomaly, then uh, a couple days later I did a bunch of experimentation with it. And then uh, within a half hour later, it's not psychosomatic or mentally induced, I actually have pain in my eyeballs like a dull pain, like uh, being outside in a bright sun without sunglasses all day long for, you know, a couple days. It's rather, it's quite painful, but it is a dull pain. That and a general pain, like a dull tingling pain in my face, because I'm actually being shot, for lack of a better term, in the face by the centrifugal magnetism coming out directly like this into my eyes and into my face. So. That's something nobody else has experienced, but they haven't been dealing with an enormous volume of magnetism like uh, this giant beast will put out. Let's do another swing here again. And you can see the precession angle. Actually, I uh, lowered the tripod. I can get a much longer spin if I raise it up. They will actually sit there and dance like that for endless periods of time that it's processing in the flow of the centripetal returning from the other side. And let me reset the video and do a second section setting uh, the neodymiums higher. Thanks for watching and remember to download the book Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. Thank you.